Hey, we're back with Dr. Landstrom, and uh, we're talking about, of course, health care issues here in Guam. But before that, I tell you what, if you want to uh, give us a call here at 632-TALK, 632-8255. And with that, we'll go to Sid from Totu. Sid. Sid, you're on with Dr. Landstrom. back to Sid from Toto. Um, maybe you can give us a call back. Doc, the structure in which the, uh, I guess, medical care operates, let me understand this. The, the, the doctors, the Guam medical staff, the Guam Board of Medical Examiners, or the trustees, I mean, the hospital board and all that, they're all under the same roof. Well, not exactly. The medical staff is autonomous to the administration, GMH, and they are supposed to be there to self-police and self. The Guam Board of Medical Examiners is Department of Public Health, mm -hmm. and they're the ones that issue licenses okay. and discipline physicians. Uh, and then you got the Board of Trustees, which is in line with the medical staff. For example, privileging somebody mm -hmm. has to be approved of the medical staff, and the Board of Trustees mm -hmm. has to s sign off on this. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm looking at uh, I, I'm I'm looking at but some of the structure here and in, in some of the things that are happening up there, it, it's like, wait a minute, uh, you have some crossovers and intertwining where it, it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, is it, kind of a quasi. The, the fox guarding the hen house? Well, there are some issues. We're a small place, okay, and, and no one wants to get their buddy in trouble. Mm -hmm. And But we shouldn't be thinking of that. We should be thinking sure. of improving the quality of care and not to be, um, you know, adverse to in that. Mm -hmm. But apparently that's not the way it's perceived. Mm -hmm. So instead of improving quality assurance, mm -hmm. quality improvement, it's looked at uh, not really in that aspect of it, it you know, and, and we need to change that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that attitude so that, hey, if this happens, we can make it better next time mm -hmm. by doing this differently. Mm -hmm. and that's what we should be doing. Um, and it should not be used to, to get rid of somebody you just don't like because they have an opinion different from you. You get rid of somebody because they're not doing the work and they, they shouldn't be there if that's the case. <laughs> well, that's the way it's supposed to be, Jesse. Yeah. However, it's more like whoever speaks up and they don't like what they're saying, oh. let's get rid of this person, okay? Is that, is that why Dr. Macris is not uh, practicing here in Guam? He's my doctor. Okay, I, I think you're pretty accurate on that. Okay. <laughs> anyway, let's go to let's go to the to another Jess from Jigo. Jess, you're on. What is this, uh, Jess? Good. Uh, Senator, you know who's speaking? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Anyway, uh, considering the uh, way things are going up there, I'd like to ask them to answer. Uh, what do you think it's best that can be done with the situation up there? At pub at the uh, GMH and uh, complained that you had to resign because you had made complaint. Really, that's kind of, to me, absurd. Instead of working together, why didn't you approach the board? <laughs> Thank you, and, and that's, of course, uh, one of my regular callers to the morning show, but uh, yeah, what about that? <laughs> Well, this, that's an interesting question. I didn't resign because of any investigation because I didn't know I was being investigated when I resigned. Uh -huh. However, um, I resigned because I was going to Afghanistan and my privileges were going to be expired while I was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, the way they changed the bylaws that if you cannot make all your meetings or uh, and go to your responsibilities, mm -hmm. There are some individuals on the GMH medical staff that might say, hey, look, he's not making these meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, let's not renew his privileges mm -hmm. and let's report into the National Practice. But, 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 let, let, me, let me ask you this. Let me stop you real quick because there is, a, there is, there is provisions that if you are deployed, if you're deployed, you know, Uncle Sam says, hey, look, I, I need you. I need you not only as a doc, but I need you as a warrior as well. You get deployed. And, yeah, your privileges were running out. 
and you you already said to uh, the hospital and they cannot they can't you cannot lose your a job they have to preserve that job why then would they have to impose that you're you're going to lose your your uh, your uh, your hospital privilege because because the country calls for your assistance somewhere else that's a good point but that's not really as they can protect your job mm -hmm. okay has nothing to do with my privileging. Mm -hmm. That's completely out of the realm of, of the ESGR. Okay, okay, okay. And to be really honest with you, uh, you know, the, it, you know, I, not having, you know, not having those privileges at that particular time, mm -hmm. you know, I'd have to reapply anyways mm -hmm. because when sure, it expires, sure. it's going to do the same thing. But, but, you expi but, but it expired when you were deployed, right? Yes, that's correct. But there's nothing in our bylaws or anything that says just because our, because the bylaws were changed. Yeah. The whole bylaw said if you're deployed and you can show a copy of your orders, you're good to go. They got rid of those bylaws so that they said under auspices of JCO approval mm -hmm. to get JCO because they said the bylaws were too complicated. So our new bylaws have none of that in there. <laughs> Jeez. George from Delano, you're on with Dr. Lansham. Hi, Senator, and uh, hi, Dr. Lansham. Hi, how you doing? I would just like to ask, uh, is it common uh, procedure at GMH to discharge patients from the hospital with the bone uh, protruding from their amputation? And why is it that some doctors uh, won't condemn in writing the actions of alleged malpractice by other doctors who do, you know, why do I have to pay an off-island doctor to uh, dispute a local doctor's action? Well, those are great questions, and the answer is uh, no. I, I don't think that's within the standard of care. If it is, then you have to go to a different facility. But if you've got an exposed, anybody's got an exposed bone, uh, you know, certainly things have to be done in a correct manner. Now, can that be taken care of as an outpatient if you're adequately taken care of? The answer is yes, but it depends on where the bone is exposed and mm -hmm. what reasons in clinical situation. Mm -hmm. so the answer to your second question is what I feel like is even more important mm -hmm. is because if you speak out mm -hmm. like I did, mm -hmm. someone, there's, you know, depending on who's you know, who's in charge at the Board of Medical Examiners, who's at the Board of Medical Examiners, who's in charge of the Medical Executive Committee at GMH, you may not end up, you know, having a privileges at GMH anymore mm -hmm. because you spoke out or license. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Simple as that. And, yeah. and a great example of that is Dr. George Mackers. He was never sued. Mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he never had any mortality or morbidity mm -hmm. or anything like mm -hmm. that. Yet, not only did he lose his privileges, but he lost his license from Guam. That's and, and, and the bottom line is, it, it, it's not an objective uh, situation. Mm -hmm. That's why. And mm -hmm. that's why I think physicians on Guam, um, they say, I don't want to get involved. I don't blame them. I don't want to get involved mm -hmm. because of, I'm, you know. But, you, but, but, you know, Doc, this is, this, this is not maybe a, a court case or a, a civil dispute. These are lives. These Correct. are lives, lives and limb. I mean, we're, we're, we're not talking about mannequins. We're talking about human beings bleeding. I mean, you, uh, you, uh, you just came back from, you, you just told us, I mean, you put kids together that have been blown up. I mean, some of the, 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 the patients that come to GMH are, are in bad shape as well. And, well and, so, and, yeah, uh, yes, I mean, but there's a lot of, you know, just uh, let's step back. Despite, I, I don't like being negative all the time. There's lives saved all the time. The nurse is doing a great job. There's uh, the majority of the doctors do a great job. But can we get better? Can we improve mm -hmm. the care? Absolutely. Well, well that's Should what we I'm saying. There, there, is, there, is, there are a lot of good, definitely. There are a lot of good. But why is it when, when the shortcomings of maybe certain individuals or, or individuals in a medical uh, uh, organization is brought out not only by people but amongst their peers. I mean, there's hesitation. There's no sunlight shown on that. The hesitation is what I told you because a, you don't know who's going to be on the board of medical exam. Mm -hmm. You don't know who the administrator is. You don't know who the MAC is. And if you got you got the if if at the surgery department or medical department or MAC, and you got four people, five people that show up there mm -hmm. that want to get you, and the guys that are are on your side they have a tendency to stay away from conflict mm -hmm. the five guys are going to get, get you. you 
Okay, and that's where the system needs to be improved. Mm -hmm. It's an internal problem at GMH. But still, our nursing staff, our ancillary mm -hmm. staff, and majority of physicians do wonderful, great work there. And it's just this needs, system needs mm -hmm. to be improved. To be and, the, and the groups, the groups that make these decisions don't always make the best mm -hmm. decisions. Yeah. And it needs to be fixed. Yeah. We'll be right back with Dr. Landstrom, as well as we'll be going to, uh, I think it's D from Jigo when we return. Be right back.